Hello, my name is Pastor Mika and I'm from Living Word International Christian Church in Silver Spring, Maryland. I want to welcome you to today's message. I pray that it will be a blessing for you. I pray that you will receive something that God wants to seed in your spirit today. We are a church of nations and generations and we believe that you have a purpose and a plan in that. Amen, amen. He that the Son has set free I said, he that the Son has set free is free indeed. We worship you, Jesus, this morning. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You may take your seats in Jesus' name. I want to welcome you if you're here for the first time. I want to welcome you here if you're for the last time. Let's make it count, shall we? Let's make it count. I also want to remind you that the missions pledge cards are by your seats and also in the foyer there. There's information about the missionaries that we support. You can take home one of those things and, and uh, that has the pictures of the missionaries. The, it's mentioned who we support and where they are, what nations we support. And uh, depending on which one you go to more, put it there. If you go to the Bible more often, put it between your Bible. If you go to the refrigerator more often, put it on the fridge. Just make sure that you will remember to pray for our missionaries. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is good to thank the Lord. It is good to thank the Lord. It is, it is blessing to thank the Lord. We as well had a wonderful Thanksgiving Spent it with family in Indiana and then rushed home back yesterday just so that we can, I could share this message with you today. Because I believe for some of you this is going to be a life-changing message. I do, I do, I believe, I believe, yeah. We're talking about the expressions of gratitude and today the title of my sermon is How to Worship the King. How to Worship the King. Now, there's a book uh, that is quite almost the same name, How to Worship a King. It's a very good book on lifestyle of worship. If you have a chance, uh, recommend it, highly recommend it. But my title today is not exactly the same, and neither is the content of the message. It's, my title is How to Worship the King. How to Worship the King. Now, some of you are in the morning, you're, you're, you're like, how does the worship team know where to go? You know, how, how do they know to, you know, start like the same song? Because we always come a little bit behind and we're taking our cues from the worship team. How do they know where, where, when to move on, on on things like that? I'll tell you, I'll let you in on a secret. The worship team has hand signals. They have hand signals. I want to show you some of the worship so that you will know in, and, and you know, you, there's no test after this, but just so that you know what the hand signals are, this is very important. This means end the song. The people are no singing anymore. We need to stop right now. This is end the song. There is the chorus or letter C. There's a bridge and tag last line and free flow or change to the next song and, or to the top or a V is for the verse. So now you know. And uh, you're welcome to join the worship team. You know the hand signals, so that's all that's, uh, that, that we require. But you know, a friend of mine, uh, well, acquaintance, I know of him more than he, he probably doesn't know me. Uh, a, a, a Christian stand-up comedian has made up a, a list of also of, of uh, what kind of hands, how you can raise your hands in, in, the, in, in the church. And what are the different, he's given names for the different styles of, of worshiping, uh, uh, you know, hand raising in the church. And, and we have that one as well here. It's, it's uh, depending on, on your uh, level of how good you are. Do we have the next, uh, next slide? It's got the, the signals. You know, it, it starts from the rookie position, and, and this is the rookie position. You know, it's called the elbow flap. You know, if you're new to Living Word, you can start with just this. You know, it's, it's the elbow flap. Uh, this is called the carry the TV, and this is go big screen. 
you know? And, and then we have, you know, the intermediate level is uh, my fish is this big. This is what it's called. Um, hold my baby. And then Mufasa. And uh, then we have the pro level is uh, dueling light bulbs, goal posts, and uh, then there's the pointer, hatchet, or school room. School room is, is this one, you know, just put your hand up there. And then we have the, the uh, expert level, and uh, this has a small warning in it that Baptists should not attempt this one. Uh, but it's got the village people, it's got Rocky, and then it's got the, the you know, touchdown, and uh, we, we, we done it. So those are, those are the worship hand signals. Now, whatever your way is, it's right. It's right. Whatever you have felt that God is moving on you, but sometimes it's also a matter of obedience. Obedience. I'm going to talk to you about, about obedience, and I have one more picture that I want to show you. The world's biggest sporting event is going on right now. How many of you know what it is? Yes, don't call it soccer. It's actually called football. <laughs> football, FIFA World Championships are going on in Qatar. The opening game was a game between the host nation Qatar and Ecuador. On the many of the South American teams and Central American teams, you find a lot of born-again believers. And as Ecuador finished their game, the ones who confess the Lord actually got together before they started celebrating, and they kneeled on the ground, they lift their hands to the Lord and thanked Him, and thanked Him. Now, in itself, it's probably, you know, like we can see those things in different sporting events, but what I love about this is they're actually worshiping the king in the midst of one of the strongest and strictest Muslim nations in the world, where there is no freedom to worship him. They brought in all these people to worship the king, worship the king. Now, there's two parts in what I want to share this morning. Uh, the first part is biblical principles of worship. And the second part is the biblical practices of worship. Now, on all of these, this is not an exhaustive list of the principles of worship that the Bible speaks about. But these are some things that I felt like the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart as we are worshiping the king and how to worship the king. This is what the Bible teaches about worship, about us uh, first of all. The first thing is when you're worshiping the king, focus on the king. Focus on the king. Focus on the king. In other words, don't focus on what the others are doing. And don't focus on what other people may think when they see you worshiping. Focus on the king. Not on yourself or your worship and what other people are thinking about it. I wonder what they're thinking about me. Or not on others and their way of worship. I don't, you're not supposed to ask, I wonder what the person sitting next to me is thinking. Or what the people behind me when they see me worshiping are going to be thinking. That's none of your business. Heaven is where you are worshiping. Heaven is where you're lifting your hands towards. Heaven is the object and the direction of your worship. Not the people behind you. Not the people around you. Number two, do not criticize the worship of others. Do not criticize the worship of others. You know, it's so easy to criticize, you know, somebody who's being really expressive or it's easy to criticize somebody who's being extremely quiet and not expressing at all. And you're starting to wonder, I wonder what's wrong with them. I wonder what's wrong with, with him. And, and, and it's sometimes very difficult to not criticize 
the person that you know the best. Because you know that morning you had an argument on the way to church. And there he is pretending like nothing happened. And I'm so angry at him. And, and I can't believe he's worshiping like that. I can't believe he feels like it's okay. Remember, focus on the king, not on your neighbor. Focus on the king, not on your spouse. Focus on the king, not on your children. Focus on the king, not on your parents. Focus on the king. Keep your mind and don't criticize their way of worshiping. And, and we are a pretty free church, and I'm praying that there'll be even an increased amount of freedom even after today to worship in our midst. But I just want to warn you, do not criticize another church's way of worshiping God. The fact that they don't necessarily raise their hand, the fact that they don't necessarily clap, the fact that they don't necessarily jump up and down, it is no reason for us to criticize. And you know, sometimes when we're tempted to criticize, remind yourself that you don't know what God is doing in their life. You don't know where their worship is stemming up from. You don't know what has happened to them this past week. Maybe this is the only offering that they can give to Him that morning. And this, of course, are principles of worship when we come together, but there's also a private part of worship. And these apply to those private parts of worship as well when we're worshiping Him in our own closet, when we're worshiping Him when no one else sees. Do not criticize the worship of others. There's a very, very sad story in the Old Testament of a king called David who was bringing the altar, the, the, the presence of the Lord and the symbol of it, the Ark of the Covenant, into the city of Jerusalem. And they say that he, the king was dancing wildly. He had taken off most of his clothes any good pastor would have stopped that. You're not going to take off your clothes. I'm sorry. Uh, you can dance, but, you know, we, we draw the line somewhere. But there was his wife was actually looking up from a balcony, from a window, and looking at, at her husband worshiping, and she despised him. She despised his worship. <laughs> and it is no accident there that the following verses say, that Michal, the wife, was never able to bring forth a son or a daughter. She became barren. She was barren her entire life because of what had happened in that instance. She despised. If sometimes you're thinking about the barrenness in your life, if you're thinking about why is something spiritual not happening, why don't you go back and ask the Holy Spirit to re reveal to you, have I criticized someone else's worship? Have I, have I treated someone else in my mind or in my heart and said that that was not good enough for the Lord? You know, there was a lot of people who were criticizing the widow who was bringing as a worship the two mites, two pennies to the front. And Jesus said, she did more. She did more. She did more than anyone else who was bringing in big offerings to the Lord. Don't criticize. Don't judge. The third principle is this. Worship with intent. Worship intentionally. Think about what you're doing. Don't just... Lift your hands just for the sake of lifting your hands or exercise. <laughs> Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're doing. Intention. I visited the Museum of the Bible in D.C., and it's a great place to visit, by the way. And, and on, on a few of the days, they have actually a Jewish rabbi who is writing the, the, a Torah there. And you're not allowed to disturb him, but then at 2 o'clock when he finishes his work for that day, 
you can ask him questions. So I was there, and we started chatting, and we started, we started thinking and, and, and talking. And he says, the most important, I said, why can't, don't you have printers, you know, that you can print the Torah? You know, every synagogue needs to have an original Torah. Don't you have? He says, oh, we do. But see, the, the, the printing press, and they have books in, in houses and, and even in the synagogues, but the printing press cannot put the soul of the person into what they're writing and he can't write with intent. And that's the difference. I'm writing with intent. I said, how do you do that? I said, every morning when I begin, I pray that, Lord, use my hand. And, and every time he comes to the name of God, he has to stop, pause, think, pray, and only then write the name of God, which he's not able to pronounce. When you're worshiping, worship with intent. Number four, worship from the heart. Worship from the heart. Worship from the heart. Uh, worship is not a spectator sport. It's not a spectator sport. Sometimes we get into perhaps the mindset that, you know, the, uh, if you go to a theater, sometimes you see a box such as this, and, and under the stage, there's actually a person, and you can't see them, but they're called the whisperer. There's actually a person there who helps in case somebody forgets the lines. You know, so they whisper the, the beginning of the line. So now you know a secret. Next time you go to a theater production, you can see that there is a small, and it can, be, it can be covered by something, and you might not be able to even recognize it, but there is a small hole there, and the, and the whisperer is there and is whispering. Some of us think that the Holy Spirit is the whisperer, and the worship team is the one who's performing, and because of sometimes our sanctuaries are like this, we are the audience and we're watching how the worship team does and, and how, how they're doing with the, with the whisper of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. We need to change that mindset. The worship team is the whisperer. You are the worshipers. And God is the one who we're worshiping. He's the audience. He's the audience. He's the audience. So worship with intent. These are just some biblical principles, and there's many, many more. We could speak for an entire year about worship, and, 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 and we can, but that's not today's uh, sermon. We're talking just a little bit and scratching from the surface because I really feel like God wants to speak to us about the biblical practices of worship. How do we worship Him? The biblical practices. How does the Bible teach us to worship the King? What are the different ways that we can incorporate both in our private life, private worship, as well as public worship? What are the things that the Bible says that we can do? And the first one is, shut up. by being quiet, by being quiet. You can worship God by being quiet. Some of the guys went, amen, thank you, Jesus. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Revelation 8 verse 1, it depicts a, a scene of worship that will happen. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2. Do not be rash with your mouth. And let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Let your words be few. 
Now, quietness can be quietness just for sake for quiet, of quietness. And that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about an intentional moment of stillness intentional moment of stillness. If you're from the younger generation, they tell me, and I've uh, uh, tried it myself as well, and I'm, I'm quite uh, almost as bad, but they say that, that a, a, a new generation actually flips their phone up two to three hundred times every day. They pick the phone up, pick the phone up, pick the phone up. When you're talking about being silent, being still before the Lord, it's doing actually absolutely nothing and the first battle you have to battle with is not the devil it's usually your phone it's usually your mind that goes into a million different spaces and so you're needing to bring everything together and be quiet before the Lord be still before the Lord be still and know that he is Lord. And these are very important, by the way, having those moments of quiet, having those moments of pause. If you had music and you didn't write the pauses between the, on the lines, all you just have is long noises, a lot of, a lot of musical notes. But there's also these pauses that actually make it into beautiful music. Pause is something that makes it into a beautiful music. The second biblical practice of how to worship the king is by, by standing. By standing. Just by standing. Standing out of reverence. In, in Exodus uh, chapter 3 and verse 33, Moses stood. Moses stood. In Exodus 33, verse 8, so it was wherever Moses went into the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. There was a sense of, I need to stand up for this. I need to stand up. It, it doesn't matter whether you're going to a concert or you're seeing a national a great hero or a leader or a, a famous military leader or the president of a nation. Whenever they enter the room, people tend to stand up, right? People tend to stand up and, and pay attention because it shows expression of, of reverence and honor. And when you're standing, you're also declaring that you're grateful for the salvation that He has given to you. He brought me out. Psalm chapter 40, verse 2 says, He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon the rock to stand. When you're standing, you're declaring something that the Lord has done. He has established your steps. You're standing to declare. You're standing to give thanks. Psalm 135, the two first verses says, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, O you servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of God. We also stand to make our requests known, to confess our sins, and we stand to hear better. We stand to hear better. The sons of Aaron stood because their duty was, First Chronicles verse 23, verse 30 says, their duty was to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord. And likewise at evening, and at every presentation of a burnt offering to the Lord on the Sabbaths and on the new moons and on the set feasts, by number according to the ordinance governing them regularly before the Lord. <laughs> the first job that they were told to do was, was to stand. Was to stand. Was to stand. I don't want to just teach theory. I want to also put it into practice. So would you do with me as we're moving through these scriptures and, and principles, would you, would you be willing to also 
engage in it. So would you stand with me for just a moment? And we'll just be still before the Lord. Just be still before the Lord. Just focus on Him. And for just a moment, just to stand before His presence. Focus your eyes, focus your attention on Him. I'm going to go through a few verbs in the Hebrew language in which the Old Testament was written because they each express a a different way of worshiping and a, a different insight into how to worship the king. Uh, the first word uh, is yada. Can you say it with me? Yada. Yada is mentioned 114 times in the Old Testament. And it, it simply means to extend your hand or to hold out your hand physically. Uh, sometimes, you know, it was used when you're throwing a, a, a rock or, or an arrow at or, or away. But it's used... Uh, to revere or worship with extended hands, to confess, to praise, to shoot. It's when you're expressing praise because God has been good to you. That's the word that you use, yada. That's, that's, that's what yada has. God has been good to me, and so I'm extending my hand as a sign of gratefulness. That God has been good to me. I, I cast out my hands. I lift my hands. I extend my hands because God has been good to me. Now, is there anyone in this room that God has been good to? If that's you, would you extend your hand? One or two or if you got more, you can say, God, you have been so good. You've been so good. And so, Father, we yada, we, we extend our hands in worship this morning because you have been so good to me. You have done amazing things. You have lifted our feet from the miry clay. We were about to sink, and you came in, and you ran after us, and you scooped us out, and you put our feet on solid ground. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Yada is praising God because you have a job, because you have a roof over your head. You, you, you're expressing yada because you have food on your table. Yada is expressing the goodness of the Lord, the praise that comes because you have received something and you're acknowledging it, that it comes from you, Lord. Now, I don't care who is your employer. The source is always God. The source is always God. And so you're acknowledging with yada, with extending your hands, that God, you have been good to me. Psalm 45 verse 17 uses this. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Yada, I will praise you forever and ever. The nations will lift up their hands and praise you forever and ever because you have been good. Hmm. Oh, there's, there's, there's so much more. You know, that same word was also used when the high priest would once a year take a goat 
and use it as a scapegoat, as a symbol for all the sins of, of, of the nation. And once a year, he would put his hand on this scapegoat and then release it into the wilderness. That's where the word scapegoat comes from. It's actually a, a goat. And symbolically, all the sins of the nation were put on that goat. And then it was released into the world. And that, that putting that the high priest did put his hand on them, that was yada. <laughs> did you know that when you lift your hands to the Lord, you can put all your sins on Him because He already took them to the cross for you. He paid the price, and therefore, there's yada, there's praise in your heart. You extend your hand to Him. There's a second verse, second word that is used. It's called toda, toda. Can you say toda? Toda. It's used 32 times in the Old Testament. It also is extension of your hand, extending your hands. A confession, you're giving a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, you're giving your offering. It's the word toda. Now, the interesting thing about it, uh, one of the places where it's used is in Isaiah 51, verse 3. It says here, For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Thanksgiving is that. Oftentimes the word toda, the extending of hands, is used in a place in the Scripture where they had not seen the answer. Hmm. They've been asking for the healing and it hadn't come. And despite that, they would toda, lift their hands and praise Him because He's still good. He's still good. He's still good. Oftentimes, this is found in the Scriptures to, to, in, in a place where they were looking forward. Isaiah 51, the answer hadn't come yet. It was speaking of a future tense. That someday the Lord will comfort Zion. Someday He will comfort all the waste places. Someday He will make the wilderness in Eden and her desert like the garden of the... Someday it will happen. And Lord, I am waiting for that. And while I'm waiting, I'm lifting my hands to You. While I'm waiting for the answer, I'm lifting my hands to You. I'm lifting my hands in worship even when I have not seen the answer yet. So I extend my hands in gratitude for the things that you have not yet given or I have not yet seen. This is Toda is what happens when you get laid off and you lift your hands. Toda is what happens when you didn't get the Thanksgiving turkey that you were hoping for. Toda is what happens when, when there was not peace around the Thanksgiving table and despite of it, you lift your hands to heaven and you praise Him and you thank Him. Despite the fact that I have not yet seen my son return. Despite the fact that I have not seen yet my daughter return. Despite the fact I have not seen the healing in my body. I am going to, to I'm going to praise you with my hands lifted high. Nothing will stop me from praising you. That is Toda. That is Toda. Worshipping him. Despite, with my hands lifted high, with my mouth full of praise, I will bless Thee, O Lord. You know that song? 
with my hands lifted high, with my mouth filled with praise, with a heart, with a heart of praise. I will bless thee, oh Lord. Would you stand with me and just extend your hands toward the heavens? With my hands lifted high, with my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of things I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanks, I will bless thee, O worship you for the answer that are still to come. We haven't seen yet. Regardless of our situation, Lord, may you find us always with our hands towards the heavens, worshiping you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you may take your seats for just a moment. It's getting good, people. It's getting good. Isn't this good? Isn't the Word of God good? It's rich. You just thought worship was just worship. You just thought praise was praise. But there's so much more to it. And the Word of God brings it out to us. The third verse, the third word in the Hebrew language that I'd like to teach you is the word halal. Now, some of you have gone to a store and you've seen their halal meat. Now, Arabic and Hebrew, they are cousins, but they don't mean the same thing in the same languages. You know, this is not halal that. This is actually halal in the Hebrew that means to be clear, to be clear. You originally it meant to be clear sound or to be clear in the color, like the color was clear. It wasn't run off into something. It wasn't a dull color. It was clear. To shine or to make a show or to boast or to be foolish, to rave or to celebrate. To boast, to celebrate, to commend, to glory, to give, to give in marriage is that use halal and to, because something is worthy of. So I'm going to sing my praise to, to rage, to shine. Halal, halal. Psalm 113 verse 1 uses the word halal. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 150. You can try to count how many times they've used the word halal because each time they say praise, it's the word halal. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and cymbals. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, did that leave anything out? There's always a reason to praise Him, to halal Him. There's always a reason to, to do it. There's always praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts according to His excellent graces. And then all the different ways that you can halal, that you can praise Him with the different instruments coming in. With the trumpets and the guitars and the keyboards and yes, the drums. 
They all praise the Lord. They all praise the Lord. Now, if you're familiar with the word hallelujah, it actually contains that word halal. Hal, halle, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That word is found in the word hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, want, uh, I, I, I need to move on. I don't want to keep you till afternoon. You know, there's an important game I hear coming on. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, you want to go and worship them. You know, isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? That when the Baltimore Ravens or the Washington Commanders score a touchdown, it's so easy to get the hands up. Yeah! When United States scores in FIFA or, 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 or Ecuador scores, and you know, it's, yeah! That's what halal is. Yeah! I praise Him because He is good. Because he is good. I praise him. I praise him with everything that I have. I praise him with my life. I praise him with my instruments. I praise him. I halal him. I halal him. <laughs> oh, then there's the word sabah or sabak. Shabak. It's directly translated, it means to address with a loud tone. To address in a loud tone. Psalm 117, verse 1, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud Him or praise Him. Worship Him, all you peoples. Address with a loud voice. Psalm 145, verse 4, uses the word sabah. It's 11 times found in the Old Testament. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. One generation shall, Shabbat, I will declare in a loud tone the voice, the things that God has done. <laughs> Instead of lauding to the next generation what I have done, what my generation has done, how we built this country, how we built this church, how we built this family. Instead of doing that, I will, Lord, I will praise to the next generation with a loud voice. This is what the Lord has done. Are you guys Christians? Are you? Yeah? You're still okay? You're still okay? All right. With a loud tone, worshiping to the next generation, declaring to the next generation, praising God to the next generation, and encouraging one another to do that, to do that, to do that. <laughs> Sahal is the next word, nine times found in the Old Testament. Be cheerful. Be cheerful. To bellow, to cry aloud, or to cry out, to lift up, to rejoice, to make shine, to shout, to shout, to shout. Jeremiah 31 verse 7 says this, For thus says the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chiefs of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. And he said, why should I shout? Why should I shout? Let me give you one reason. Because Jesus won. Because Jesus won. Because Jesus won. Jesus has won. The power of sin and death was conquered. That is reason enough to shout. To shout. To shout, you can shout, thank you, Jesus. You can shout, hallelujah. You can shout, amen. But that is the time to shout to the Lord. Shout to the nations that He is good. To shout, to shout, to shout. Hmm. Now, let me just tell you this, that oftentimes when there has been a shout, a unified shout, a unified shout from the people of the Lord. It has brought in a breakthrough. 
a unified shout. Walls of Jericho came down not because they were digging not because they were throwing mortar or putting dynamite. There is more dynamite in your shout that can happen in the nation and the nations when, when the people of God shout in a unified way. Oftentimes, when we shout, there's a supernatural activity that takes place that we don't see. Why did the walls come down? I'm not sure. I don't know what precipitated, but I knew that my voice had something to do with it, that I shout to the Lord, that I sing out His praises, that I do something and I shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Now, I would like to see a spiritual change in this nation. I don't know if anybody else is with me on this, but I would like to see a spiritual change in this nation. I would like to see that the nation turns back to God. I think that's the reason why you and me are here. I would like to see breakthroughs in this nation. I'd like to see breakthroughs in this congregation. I'd like to see breakthroughs in your life. I'd like to see the Lord made great. So I'm wondering if we should shout. I'm wondering if we, we, should, we should shout. Would you stand with me? Would you stand with me? Yeah. Yeah. And hang on, hang on. Now, I said a unified shout. I don't know what you're asking for from the Lord. I don't know what, what you're asking for from Him today. I don't need know where you need the breakthrough, but I know that the Lord wants to give breakthroughs in this nation. And sometimes the breakthroughs only comes when His people get together, are unified, and they shout to the Lord. So if you want to, you can lift your hands. But when I count to three, I'm going to ask, would you lift up a shout of victory. See, this is not a shout of agony, of pain. This is not a shout of, of that, oh my goodness, I got bit on the leg. This is not a shout that, oh, all the things are so painful and I'm letting it out. No, this is a shout of victory. Because I know he already won and I know that the victories and the breakthroughs are coming. So on three, let's release a shout of victory victory. One, two, three. Hallelujah! We worship you. 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 Hallelujah! 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 We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah! 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 We worship you. We worship you. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Worthy. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Worthy. Oh, we worship worthy. You. You're worthy. You're worthy. Mm, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. Come on, keep on going. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Worship. Worship you, oh, we worship give you highest praise. 
We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Stay standing. I'm going to go through very quickly. Barak, it means to bend your knee. Bend your knee before the throne of God. That's another word in which we can worship the king, another way in which we can worship the king. There's zamar. It means to use the instruments, to play the strings or parts of a musical instrument. I will give thanks to the Lord and I will sing praises and play to him. There's the word tehillah, praise, adoration, and thanksgiving. I rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise for the upright full. And there's a verse in Psalm 100 and uh, Psalm 100 and verse 4 that speaks. They got actually four different verses. It says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, Todah, and his courts with praise, Tehillah, and I will be thankful, Yada, to him, and I will bless his name, Barak, to him. Oh, oh, my people, if they would worship him. My people, if they would worship him. Oh, there's dancing as well mentioned in the Bible. You know that God created dancing. The devil might have tried to steal it, but God created dancing. It was we are to dance for him. The Bible speaks that God rejoices over us with dancing. He rejoices over you with dancing. So let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's take the next few moments and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship Him. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Worship team, can you help us in worshiping Him? And you can use any of those movements. You can lift your hands up. Doesn't matter if it's a if it's a touchdown or or not. God's created the greatest touchdown when He scored for you. He won for you. You can clap your hands. Bible speaks of the trees clapping their hands. You can clap your hands. You can bend your knees before Him. You can shout aloud to Him. You can sing to Him. You can toda to Him. You can yada to Him. Whatever your situation, you can do it today. You can worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. You picked me up. You turned me around. You set my feet on solid ground. I I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. You healed my heart, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God.
Come on. I'm slowly drifting a bag of bars. Just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. You pick me up, you turn me around. He plays my feet on the solid ground. I play the master, I play the savior. Because you healed my heart, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I play the master, I play the savior. I thank God. I cannot deny what I see. Got no choice but to believe my thoughts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends, burning and bitterness. You can't keep them moving. Now nah, they ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I sing of how you save my soul. This wayward child has found her way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Lord, would you allow us to see the secrets of our worship, Father? What happens in the heavenlies when we worship? And Father, even when we don't see it, may you find us faithful in worshiping you. May you find us faithful in worshiping you. When the world is not giving what it's supposed to be giving, when the life is not going the way we intended it to go, may you find us faithfully worshiping you. Till the last moments and the last breaths, would you find us faithfully worshiping you with everything that is within us, Lord? Everything that is within us, Lord. Everything that is within us, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We've come to worship you, to worship you, to worship you, and to worship you. We live, we live, we live to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just wanna thank you. I just wanna thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and sing it out. bow your heads for just a moment. I want to give an opportunity here in this room. If there's somebody here, you don't have a reason to praise yet. You have not met with the man from Galilee. You've not met Jesus of Nazareth. You've not met him as your Savior. 
and you have no reason to worship him yet, but you would like to, I want to pray for you today so that he would come into your life, forgive your sins, and give you a reason to worship. So if that's you here and you're not sure, you don't know, and you'd like to be sure, let me just ask you, would you just put up your hand wherever you are and I'll pray for you from right here and we can make that relationship right. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Anybody else here? God sees you in the back there. God sees your hand. God sees your hand. Amazing, amazing. Anybody else here? Anybody else here? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Pray this prayer after me in your heart. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I cannot save myself, and I'm grateful that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I receive him into my life. I ask for his forgiveness. Thank you that you've cleansed me and washed me clean today. Today is a new day in my life, and I can begin to worship him with everything that is within me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you give a wonderful welcome to these brothers and sisters today? Oh, if you prayed that prayer today, would you just write uh, in the notes, put a note and uh, put, uh, leave your information. We'll get in touch with you and you can put it in the boxes in the front. This is going to be an amazing week. Wednesday night, we're going to have a healing service. If you are sick or you know of somebody who's sick, you need to bring them here. You need to come here. Wednesday night, starting at 6.30, we'll have some refreshment. At 7 o'clock, we'll start the service. First Friday of prayer, we're going to worship Jesus. We're going to pray and praise together. We've got a good start now, so we're not going to stop now. So Wednesday night, Friday night, and Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. May he give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen. God is good. God is good. Thank you for joining us for today's message. We pray that it has blessed you. And remember, God's word is like a seed that's planted into our hearts. It takes some time to grow and produce much fruit. If you're ever in the DC metro area, we'd love to see you at Living Word. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this week's message. We hope that you heard something that will make a difference in your life. If you're part of the Living Word family and wish to give in support of this ministry, visit us online at lwicc.org and click on the tab that says Give. You may also give through our Living Word Church app, or you can text LWGIVE and the dollar amount to 855-799-1777. For more information about Living Word International, service times, directions, and how to sow into the ministry, visit us online at lwicc.org. Again, that's lwicc.org. Thank you again for visiting us and have a blessed week.